Greetings, Global Kingdom family, and welcome to Bahamas Faith Ministries' YouTube channel, where we transform followers into leaders and leaders into agents of change through the message of the kingdom, the message that Jesus preached. Be sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell so that you can be notified when we are live or when new content is posted. We're excited to provide you with the information, inspiration, and revelation that produces transformation. Now let's jump into today's message. Our theme for 2024 is kingdom influence. Some of you may say, well, why is kingdom influence the theme for 2024? I'm glad you asked. I'm going to explain that in a moment, but just before I do, I have a very special announcement. You heard me mention this a few weeks ago, but today I'm releasing another book, and uh, this book... Whenever I write books, there's a specific purpose. And what I realize is that in the body, especially in the Bahamas, there's a lot of confusion about the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues and so on. And a lot of people don't know um, how to apply the Holy Spirit to their lives on a daily basis. They don't know how to administrate speaking in tongues, when is speaking in tongues appropriate, uh, you know, when is interpretation appropriate and all those kinds of things. And so we need wisdom and we need guidance. And so we, I, I've written this book and it is a short, simple book that explains all of the details and equips every believer with understanding the Holy Spirit and also understanding speaking in tongues. So today we have a special on the book. This, this, this release today, we, we have a special for $10. You can get it after the service. Amen. And we are beginning our fasting and consecration tonight, and I encourage you to be a part of it. Start, start out your year right. And I have recommended some resources as I do every year. We are three part beings. We are spirit, soul, and body. So the book on the Holy Spirit was released to coincide with our consecration so that you can understand how to um, get the information that you need for your spiritual development. And then what God wants you to know about food and health, the new year is a good time to recalibrate your health. And so we recommend that book that talks about food and health and all of those things. And then the laws of good success, which just tells you how to live life the right way. Our online viewers today include William Avivi from Accra, Ghana. We have Malena Contreras from Venezuela and Salonet Soto from San Juan, Puerto Rico. Let's give them all a big round of applause. And I just remember there's one item I need to mention before we get into service today. Many of you have contacted me and asked questions about some of the things that are going on in the United States with some of the pastors and information that has come out. Um, I want to address it, but I don't want to address it based upon name or personality. I want to address it based upon principle. Okay? So here's what I want you to know about principle. God operates by principles. He does not operate by personalities. So no matter who you are, you have to obey the principle. If you don't obey the principle, then you suffer the consequences of violating a principle, no matter who you are. And the thing about it is that there are no exemptions. God doesn't exempt you because you're a celebrity. He doesn't exempt you because you prayed for people. Every one of us, we have to eat what we serve. If you're telling people to eat it and you're eating it, there's something wrong there. Amen? And what happens is, when pastors and preachers and leaders do things that are outside of kingdom policy and protocol, what happens is that it is called misrepresentation. Okay? If, if, you, are, if you are sent to represent somebody, but you do something different than what you were sent to do, that is called misrepresentation. Okay? 
And we have, to re we have to recognize when misrepresentation happens and whenever misrepresentation happens, we have to go back to the word, go back to the principle, okay? And remember this, no matter who you are, no matter what your status is, you have to qualify in the kingdom. You can't say, as people do nowadays, I am an apostle. No, no, no. There's a qualification attached to that position. If you don't qualify, you could say everything you want, but you, don't, you, 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 you will be like the person that God says is going to come before him at the judgment day, where they say, uh, Lord, we did all these things in your name. He said, man, I don't know you. You didn't qualify. Okay? So we have to understand that you have to qualify. You also have to be accountable. Now, I am not saying that people are not subject to falling and, because we all are open to temptation. Any of us can fall at any time. But there's a difference between falling and diving. Okay? Now, if you fall, we understand. But if you are diving, <laughs> we can't help you. <laughs> and uh, everyone has to be accountable. I have to be accountable. You know, I can't come to here and, and preach to you every week and then misrepresent God. Because if, if I do that, I need to be fired. Amen. Amen? Now, I'm not saying I am not capable of falling. Thank God there's no major fall in my history and I don't plan on any fall. But I realize that I'm human and I'm subject. But like everybody else, I have to be accountable. So if, if, if I disqualify myself, you know, I have to suffer the consequences. We have seen in certain instances where certain pastors have observed the proper protocol. So in situations where some pastors have fallen, they have been removed from their position for a period of time. They've received counseling and then they've been restored. That's the proper way to do it. Okay. And uh, the other thing I want you to remember is we need to stay focused. Don't, don't get caught up in personalities because personalities cannot save you. It's the kingdom that brought us this far. We are saved by grace. We live by faith. And I have a personal testimony. You can't judge your validity in the kingdom by what somebody else does in misrepresenting God. Okay? And I'm not speaking aspersions on anybody's name or character or anything like that. I'm giving you a principle because that is my responsibility. As the ambassador in this house, I have to tell you the truth. And I can't butter it up and pretty it up. This is the truth. Amen? And we have to stay focused because God is not to be mocked. You know? And some of the things that some of pastors and priests and stuff have been accused of, they are really criminal offenses. And we have to, we are, if, if that's the case, then, you know, the chips need to fall where they may. But I just wanted to clarify that, okay? So any, if you have any questions, those are the answers to your questions. I'm not getting into names and personalities and all of that. Um, many persons, uh, many, many famous pastors I know I have a relationship with, some of them and so on, but I, can't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't deal with relationship when it comes to the gospel. You know, if you violate the gospel, then you have to be accountable for the word that you claim that you represent. Amen? Amen. So, we're getting back to kingdom influence. Everybody say kingdom influence. Kingdom influence. All right. Our subtopic is under the influence. The minute I said under the influence, people started laughing. <laughs> because they're having some thoughts. They remembered the time when they were under the influence. But I'm not talking about that kind of influence. In fact, if you go to the scripture, the scripture speaks in a differential manner about being under the influence. In the book of Acts, as we know, something happened and obviously people were under the influence. And so the people who were gathered in that area, they started to, 
to, to murmur among themselves and they say, these people must be under the influence. And they were not thinking of a good influence. They thought that these people, something is wrong with these people. It says, these people, and so the, uh, uh, the apostle Peter got up and he said, look, the, uh, let me clear this up. These people are not drunk. Now he didn't say they are not drunk. He said they are not drunk as you suppose. He said these people are all kapunkal up. They are under the influence. But you have to understand what kind of influence this is. So let me explain the influence. He says as you suppose it is only nine in the morning. So these people they look like they were drunk at nine in the morning. And the Apostle Peter said, no, no, these ain't drunk like you suppose. I know it's nine in the morning and you're all trying to figure out how did these people get drunk? And he said, no, this is what the prophet Joel spoke about. The prophet Joel prophesied that there would be a time when we would be under the influence. He said, man, we're going to be so kapunkal up. And for our visitors and our online um, um, audience, kapunkal up is a Bahamian word for men. Bust right up. Well, I guess that might be another Bahamian word. <laughs> Let's say inebriated, intoxicated. <laughs> it says, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, or all people. And your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, your old men will dream, dream dreams. He say, this is that. This is that influence that, that, that was prophesied. This is going to come on you and you will get drunk. And you will enjoy being drunk. And you will say, give me another hit. That last hit wasn't enough. Give me one more hit. I don't know how many of you all have had a hit of the Holy Ghost. But I had some hits, and I, 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 I like them hits. I see Brother Penny even laughing over there. I mean, Brother Lewis and Sister Penny. You see, this was prophesied that one day the Holy Spirit would live in us and influence us so that we become under the influence. Everybody say under the influence. So I want to give you a little backdrop on being under the influence. Jesus commanded his disciples and he said to them, go into all the world and make disciples. So God commissioned us to do something. Now the interesting thing about this command is that he did not say go into the world and take over the world. He didn't say take over the government. He didn't say uh, you know, take charge of every institution. He just said, go into the world and make disciples. So what he was saying is, I am not giving you administrative authority over the earth. I am giving you influence. And the influence that you generate will cause people to become disciples. Is everybody still with me? So he expected us as kingdom ambassadors to have influence and to use that influence to change our environment and the world. Say this with me. Say, we are supposed to influence. We are supposed to influence every aspect of life. We are supposed to influence culture, business, economy, community, family, government, faith. And Jesus said the example. Jesus influenced the environment that he existed in. He caused things to change. He caused, uh, you know, um, different opinions to emerge. He caused different actions by people. We remember that he met the woman at the well and he influenced her. He met the disciples and he influenced them. He didn't coerce them or command them. His presence and the presence of the Holy Spirit on him caused people to be influenced to follow him and that's what we are all about so what is influence influence is the capacity to have an effect on the character development or behavior of someone or something or the effect itself as a verb influence typically means to affect or change someone or something 
in an indirect but usually important way. So when you influence, it means that you don't coerce a person. You don't say, come here, put them in a headlock and say, you have to do this. But what you do is your presence, your lifestyle, your words cause people to start thinking about where they are and changing their behavior. That's what influence does. When you think about it, when you are under the influence of alcohol, it changes your behavior. You start out talking one way and you say, yes, 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 brother Julian, how are you doing today? And then, uh, you know, after it, everything again, yeah, what are you saying, boy? Everything good, you know? <laughs> and so you become, <laughs> some of you all know what I'm talking about. I see plenty of people in here who've been under the influence. <laughs> but you see, it affects your behavior, okay, when you are under the influence. So influence is something or someone that influences, influences a person or thing and then has an influence on that person or thing. So we are born to be influencers. We are both under the influence and we are designed to influence, which means we become influential. Tell the person next, you say you're an influential person. An inf influential person is someone who is having a great influence on someone or something. And today, many of us are in the kingdom of God today because someone had influence on us. You know, I was, I was in, in a meeting the other day and persons were talking about how they came to BFM and it's amazing how people ended up here and their, and their stories. You know, one person said um, there was a person in their office and the person in their office was one way for a certain amount of years. They were, you know, a party person. They did all kinds of stuff. And then all of a sudden, this person changed and their attitude changed and their behavior changed. And so the person who was in the office started asking questions, saying, well, what happened to you? And then he explained, this is what happened to me. And so that person was attracted and influenced to the point where they say, I have to find out more about this. And they came to church and they never left. Forty years later, they're still here. Amen? In Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, Jesus said this. Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. Everybody say salt. salt. Salt is a very important component. He says, but if salt loses its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything and except to be thrown out and trampled under feet. So one of the things that Jesus did with us before he left is he said, I am going to tell you how you are supposed to be. He said, you are supposed to be like salt. Now, why did he choose salt? Because salt is a very powerful chemical component. What do you, you call it? Um, they, mineral. It's a very important mineral. Salt, see, the, the, thing about, the interesting thing about salt is that salt influences its environment without becoming influenced. That's why he said, be in the world of, and not of the world. When you think about salt, salt does not change its flavor for you. Salt don't care if you put it in the fire, if you put it in the pot, if you put it, whatever you put it in, it's going to come out salty. Wherever salt is, the environment becomes salty. So if the environment that you live in ain't salty, then you're not salt. And you got to check your flavor. Tell the person next to you, say, check your flavor. Now, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't mean to antagonize you today. But I, 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 just, I just thought this would be helpful. And some of you all are saying, Pastor Dave, hurry up, finish church. I can see that right now. <laughs> but the reason I put this image up it's because what's interesting about salt is, have you ever tasted fish without salt? You know, it doesn't have the flavor that, 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 that appeals to your palate. But here's the thing about salt. You sprinkle salt on the fish, and you put it in the oven. 
And when it's finished baking, at the bottom of the oven, it's salty. On the top of the fish, it's salty. In the middle of the fish, it's salty. Salt is so powerful that it doesn't care what is around it. It just influences. It influences the flavor. And you see, that's how Jesus described us. He said, man, you're supposed to be people of influence. When you show up, the flavor changes. And as long as you're around, the flavor remains. When you move, the flavor ain't there no more. And so you got to be salt. And we are called to be salt and not sugar. Very important. God said, I want you to be salt, <laughs> which is a powerful flavor, and not sugar, which is too sweet. Because here's the thing about salt versus sugar. Salt is both a preservative and an influencer. Salt is a preserver. It preserves things and it flavors things. Sugar, on the other hand, is responsible for many diseases replicating. Uh, I, I remember I was speaking to our esteemed Dr. Simmons here, and he explained something to me. It was the first time I understood it. Uh, he said, wherever sugar is, viruses and bacteria thrive, which is why when you, when you have a diabetic and they have an infection, it doesn't get healed because too much sugar is around. Am I correct, doctor? Yeah, I just want to make sure I get it right. So God didn't say be sugar. Now the person next to me say, you're in sugar. <laughs> now there are times when, you know, if you were with your husband or wife, you could be sugar. <laughs> But you see, in the kingdom of God, you got to be salt because you can't lose your flavor and you can't create an environment where bacteria and viruses thrive. Right now in our Bahamas, we have too much sugar because everywhere you go, you have bacteria, all the murders and all that kind of stuff happen. That's the result of sugar, not salt. We need to put more salt in the environment. That's why Jesus said we are the salt of the earth. I remember one time... Um, Someone I know had a, had, a, had a skin burn, and they were talking to the doctor about what to do, and the doctor said, go in the sea. And I was trying to figure out, um, why do you go in the sea? And then I figured it out after a while. You go in the sea because the sea has salt, and the salt produces healing. So when Jesus described you as salt, he was, he, he was in the background um, giving you a plethora of information about, he wasn't just saying be salt. There was some deep stuff behind that. So salt also causes healing. That's why whenever you show up, people get better. People's lives get better. You know, I, I've seen situations here in the ministry where persons have been going through all kind of relationship issues, uh, financial issues, and they speak to a salty person. And after they speak to the salty person and get into a salty environment, then they, their problems get solved and they become salty. I have seen persons who have had financial problems. Now that today they are in good shape because of the salt of the word. I've seen people with relationship issues. It's like they've been renewed because they've been around salt. Salt is most effective in both preservation and flavoring. You see, if you put salt in something, it lasts longer. Before they had re refrigeration, the primary method of preservation was salt. Some of our members here, they can go back to the island. I, uh, Dr. Simmons back in Cat Island, they used to use the salt. He, he, he put the thumbs up. So salt was a, is a preservative, which means that we are preserving the world. We, we, we are stopping the decay in the world and we are preserving it from completely falling apart. Amen. That's why Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. You know, we had a meeting with the Crime Commission the other day and some of you may have seen it on the news. 
And they were talking about solutions. And I tell them, I say, man, look here, you know, every, every week people getting together and, and talking about the problem. I say, man, I already know what the solution is. Listen to me. I, have, I, could, I could bring the people here. In fact, I am going to the next meeting. I can bring some people and say, these are the results. And you see, we have the answers. Because when Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth, he means if anybody in the world has answers, it's you. Because I give, I give you my name. I give you my credentials. I give you my spirit. So if there's any question in the world, you are the answer. As long as you remain salty. That's the problem. A lot of people are salt and then they, they, they turn sugar. I don't want you turning sugar on me. Amen. So you got to stay salty. Tell the person next to you, say, you got to stay salty. So now, now I want to talk a little bit about influence. Types of influencers and influence. Let me give you some examples. First of all, have you ever heard this terminology, bad influence? I remember when I was growing up, my mother used to say, don't hang around them boys, they are a bad influence. Not understanding that I was the bad influence on the rest. <laughs> so you remember your parents telling you that? Boy, that's, that's a bad influence, and the parents don't know the real story. <laughs> so you could have bad influence, or you could have good influence. And when we look at influences, one of the most popular influences today are what they call social media influences. You ever heard that terminology? Now, who are, who are social media influences, and what do they do? Let me give you some examples. Social media influences today are in great demand. People are paying people because of their influence. These internet companies, they will pay a, a, a little teenager who's 16 or 18 years old millions of dollars. Why? Because they are influencing people. So a social media influences, some of them, they, they have arisen from ordinary, unknown citizens to influencers making big money because of some unique feature or content. And you see, people are attracted to people who influence, which is why you have to be solved, because if you are not solved, people are not going to be attracted to you. Influence means the power to affect, the social media influence means the power to affect the purchasing decisions of others. Now, it ain't because they like them. They are paying them because they have influence on people's decisions, buying decisions. And you know these companies like Amazon and, and, and all of these other big companies, they want people who can influence buying decisions. So it says, um, because of her, his or her authority, knowledge, position, or relationship with his or her audience, a following is a distinct niche with whom he or she actively engages. So these social media influencers, they post stuff all the time. And when they post stuff, all these people listen to what they have to say, and they follow them. And their behavior is influenced by them, whether good or bad. Which tells you that we need some kingdom social media influencers. Amen? Because if people are influencing, there are some social media influencers who have influenced people to commit suicide. So we need some good influences. Is everybody still with me? Influences in social media are people who have built a reputation for their knowledge and expertise on a specific topic. They make regular posts about that topic on their preferred social media channels, and they generate large followings. Not only large followings, but enthusiastic, engaged people who pay close attention to their views. Brands love social media influencers because they can create trends and encourage followers to buy products that they promote. You notice it say influence trends? You see, that's what we are supposed to be doing. When Jesus said, go into all the world, he said, go into all the world and influence these people. Influence them to be attracted to the, to the kingdom, to become involved in the kingdom, and to change the world. We were destined to change the world. So they have social media influences, and I want you to know today that God wants you to be a kingdom influencer. 
It don't have to be just on social media. Wherever you go, you are a kingdom influencer. But you need to be salty. We don't want no sugar kingdom influencers. <laughs> you know what I mean, Brother Larry? We want some salty influencers. So now, I, I showed this image earlier. You see, this is the result of kingdom influence. Someone who is a vice president and then the wife of the president coming to the Bahamas. Why? Because of a kingdom influencer. Dr. Miles Monroe was a kingdom influencer. He influenced kings for the kingdom. And so because of his influence, these people flew here and they had to come. He's, Pastor Miles has is, is not been with us for um, nine years, but they, 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 just, they said they have to come here. Why? Because of the influence. It's the power of influence. Amen? And so we need to be kingdom influencers. All of us, we have a role to play. We may not go to Africa, we may not go to Asia, but we can go to our job and be a kingdom influencer. You can be the kingdom influencer in your family. Your family may be in disarray. The, the brothers and sisters don't like one another, speak to one another, and then you come in and you influence them and then they come together and they act normal. Somebody say amen. amen. And you see, sometimes influencers are celebrities. They're in the entertainment arena. arena. They're in the political arena. They're in the economic arena. Um, they're in the moral arena. So we have influences in all these arenas, but they don't count when it comes to kingdom influence. The kingdom influencer is the most important influencer of all because without the kingdom influencer, the world completely implodes, as we see happening today. You know, if you don't think the world has already imploded to a certain extent or continuing to implode, just think about this. Between 70 and 80% of the young men who are born in the Bahamas and many other countries in the world have no father. Now, something is wrong there because we were designed to have a father. And so we have these young men on the streets killing one another. And you know why they're killing one another? There are many other reasons. But you know what the main reason is? The main reason is they never had a father. Because if you never had a father, you, ne you never had someone to show you what a father is. And if you never see what a father is, then you adopt the, 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 the models that, that exist. And the models that exist today, something is wrong with them. You know, if a guy has seven children with seven different women, and everyone comes along, he says, it wasn't me. Something is wrong with that. But that has become the norm. So it tells you that we have an imploding society and we need kingdom influencers because the influence of the world today is not what God designed. So let's look at some types of influence. You have influence by association, which means that we have to get into environments where influence is needed. And when people associate with us, it creates an influential change. You know, I had, I had the opportunity to influence a lot of people who became associated with me. So basically, most, most people in here know my story, but in the youth ministry, um, I, I came to Bahamas Faith Ministries because I was influenced. I was influenced by Dr. Miles Monroe. Before that, I was influenced by my brother-in-law. I was a sinner. I was one of these guys that I just talked about. I mean, everything evil, I signed up for it. And here it is, my life was changed because of my association with a kingdom influencer. And so I was influenced. And then I moved from there, and then I started influencing. And so people who associated with me, their lives changed. You know, one, one of the persons who I was influential in their future is... is uh, Raymond Indians. You know, he came here from the streets from Baintown. You know, when he started telling me his stories, and then, I, then I, all of a sudden I realized, well, you know, he is hanging out 
with the sons of the guys that I used to hang out with. But, he, but I was able to influence him. And so today, I mean, he's a husband, he's a father, he's a pastor of two of our churches, he's working on his doctorate degree, he is a businessman. That's influence, that's kingdom influence. And you see, when you are hooked up with someone who has influence, you benefit from it. So one day there was this gentleman, he was sitting on the side of the road, and um, he was asking for help. And he, did, he was a little disheveled, you know, he looked like a homeless guy. And so this, this rich guy came by and wrote him a check. And so he went into the bank with the check. And when he went into the bank, the people said to him, get out of here, because of how he looked. So a few days later, the rich man came by, and the rich man said, what happened? So you, you, didn't, you didn't cash the check. He said, man, when I go in there, they run me out because of how I look. He said, let me tell you what to do. I want you to, I want you to, I want you to, to, to approach this differently. He said, when you go into the bank, take the check and show them the name. And so the guy went into the, to the bank. And when they started to run him out, he said, I need to show you something. They said, show me what? He said, check out that name. They looked at it, and the bank recognized the name. And the bank said, come in. The power of association. And you see, that's how God made us. We carry his name. Amen. You see, they, they may not recognize you when you first come. But when you show them the name... <laughs> Then they say, okay, okay, that name is recognized in heaven and earth and under the earth and wherever you go. Amen? So here's some areas of influence, cultural influence. You see, the culture of the kingdom is supposed to influence the culture of the earth. I don't know how many of you had this experience, but I remember um, when I went to college, and many of this happens to many of us, you go into a country for a long period of time and then your accent changes. You, you go, you leave the Bahamas and you say, yo, what are you saying, boy? And then you come back, how are you doing, young lady? <laughs> and then, you know, we used to say, hey, girl, what are you saying? Now you come back, she's a girl. <laughs> we don't know no girl in the Bahamas, it's a girl. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, it's, he's a boy, no, he's a boy. But your accent begins to change. And you come back to the Bahamas and people are saying, what, what happened to you? You were influenced by the culture. And then your behavior is influenced. I remember my behavior was influenced by me being in the United States for four years. So I was in the United States for four years and I started driving on the left side, of the, I mean the right side of the road. And I remember I graduated from college and I came back home and I'm driving on the road on the right side almost running to people. Why? I was influenced by the culture. And the kingdom culture is supposed to produce an influence on people so they change their accent and they change their behavior. They stop riding on the wrong side of the road and they start riding on the right side of the road. Now, I'm not saying that the American right, right side of the road is right. I'm just saying it's the wrong side and right side. Amen? Amen. Because the Americans like to say, you're driving the wrong side of the road. Who says it's wrong? <laughs> but our behavior is influence. And then you have substance influence. Many of us, we know about this. They call it DUI. Why do they call it DUI? They say driving under the influence. What influence are you under? You're in the under the influence of a spirit. When you go to the bar room, they show it to you plainly. You think, you think it ain't no mystery, you know. We're saying, well, you know, it's only alcohol. No, it says wines and spirits. <laughs> okay? The Bible says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. But this is not a Holy Spirit. And so we get influenced by alcohol. And alcohol is a powerful influence. Drugs are a powerful influence. And many of us know 
know the story. I remember many days. <laughs> Some of you all already laugh, um, laughing at me knowing what I'm talking about. Um, but here's Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 says. It says, what is the first thing it says? And do not be drunk with wine. Now, it can't be any plainer. The Bible says, if you're going to be drunk, don't let it be them spirits. If you're going to be drunk, let it be the Holy Spirit. Let, me, let it be the spirit that appeared on the day of Pentecost. That's the spirit that you want. It says, which is dissipation, but be filled with the spirit. So God wants you to be under the influence. He tells you, he say, I just don't want you to be that influence. You could drive under the influence, but this is the influence that you need. He said, but be filled with the spirit. And what happens when you're filled with the spirit? It says, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. That's what under the influence of the Holy Spirit does to you. You make melody. You sing psalms. You help people. You love people. You influence people for good. Amen? Everybody say under the influence. So we are supposed to be the under the influence, but it's not supposed to be drugs or alcohol. When you are under the influence, it affects your behavior and judgment, causing you to do certain things, good or bad. You know, I remember a story that happened. This is a real story that happened here in the Bahamas. There was a young lady who came to the Bahamas on spring break. This was in the newspaper. A DJ put it up. The DJ said this woman came to this young lady, um, college student, came to the Bahamas on spring break. She, she wasn't somebody who drank or, or smoked or, you know, do those, did those kind of things. But she said she's going to have some fun. Never say you're going to have the fun if you're hooking up with the devil. Because it doesn't normally end very well. It's temporary pleasure that produces permanent pain. So this young lady got drunk. And uh, she got drunk... And she ended up sleeping with some guys. She can't even remember who they were. She went back to the college. And when she went back to college, she realized she was pregnant. And then after she discovered she was pregnant, she realized she also had AIDS. And she wrote a letter to the DJ um, just before she committed suicide. Don't get under the wrong influence. Amen? We have to get under the right influence. Kingdom citizens are born again to influence. Jesus said, be in the world and not of it. In other words, be in the world, but be so salty that the environment doesn't influence you, but you influence the environment. And you can tell who you are by the influence you have. If you don't have no influence, then you sugar. If people's behavior don't cha doesn't change when you arrive and on the scene, you sugar. You see, wherever I go, it, things start to change. You know, I remember when I first came back home from school and I started to play basketball. Um, when I showed up on the court, the guys stopped cursing. Now, I didn't say, well, guys, uh, I'm, 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 I was in Pastor Dave. I'm, I'm Dave Burrows, and I'm now a believer, so please don't curse when I'm around. Some of them knew me and they knew I used to curse. But they recognized the difference. They said, man, something happened to this guy. And we have to be respectful because we remember where he came from. And they started changing their behavior. I didn't change my behavior. I just, I played ball. I relaxed. I did whatever I needed to do. But they started changing. Why? Because I was salty. Amen. So we are supposed to influence the world for the kingdom. Kingdom influence does not happen by coercion. We don't impact by imposing. We just show up and the flavor, people smell the flavor. You know, Saul doesn't say, um, I'm going to influence the fish. You just put it on and it happens. And then people recognize, man, this, this fish is properly seasoned. Some of y'all thinking about food right now. <laughs> And here's the most important example, I mean, the, mo important, the most important aspect of influence. The most powerful influence 
is example. The most powerful influence is not words. Because any mouth could say anything. That's what Bahamian say. Mouth could say anything. I remember my, my mother used to say, mouth could say anything, but it takes money to buy land. <laughs> and you see, the thing about it is, you can say anything in your quest to influence people. You can tell people, you know, you got to come to the Lord and you got to do this and, and you know, you, you got to be saved and this is a great life and all of that. And then they look at you and they say, well, what happened to you? But you see, when you show up, you may not even say a word. And they look at you and they say, man, this person got some flavor. There's something about them. You, you, have you ever heard somebody say something about something like that to you? I remember times when guys say, they, guys say man, there's something about you. I remember um, I, I was... I was the same, same on, on basketball court. A guy came and sat next to me, and he said, man, he didn't know me like that. He said, man, there's something different about you. He said, man, you, you, you're different. And then I had to explain, and he became one of my friends. Amen? Influence is as important or more important than power. You see, you could have power and when you have power, you force people to do things. But when you have influence, it becomes internalized in the person where they do it because they believe in it. Power can force people to do things, but influence can change behavior and change lifestyle. As we get, it, get ready to, to, to wrap up, I want you to remember this. Learn to adapt not adopt. You see, sometimes we get into environments and we have to adapt because of the environment that we're in. But you can adapt to accommodate the environment, but don't adopt the environment. So we are called to be different. You know, you, you might as well get used to it. You know, some people say, well, you know, everywhere I go, people, you know, uh, people treat me, I'm, I'm different. You, you will be different the rest of your life. Unless you become sugar. If you become sugar, then we wouldn't know the difference. But if you remain salt, you have to get used to being different. You have to get used to people. Some people ain't gonna like you. Some people will like you. But it really doesn't matter whether people like you or don't like you because you are not waiting for the approval of any person. God already approved you. You've been stumped. You cannot transform without influence and you cannot influence without, sex, without, without, without access and power. Amen? We pray that the message today has blessed and encouraged you to go out and live a transformed life. If you were impacted by today's message, don't keep it to yourself. Share this video with your friends and family. To see our full programming listing and service times, or to find out how you can be a part of what God's doing here at Bahamas Faith Ministries, visit our website today at bahamasfaithministries.org. Together, we can continue to transform followers into leaders and leaders into agents of change.